Homemakers, how are you guys and girls doing today? Today's tutorial is an introduction to the Node MCU. So hang on, I'll be right back. So this tutorial is an intro to the Node MCU, one of the most popular ESP8266 boards on the market today. One of the reasons is good for the pocketbook, the other one it's got all the pins broken out, makes it a little bit easier to work with and it even has a USB FTDI chip built on board so you don't need to buy a special cable for it. But there are some pitfalls to it and this tutorial will help you get over those and get jump started with your Node MCU. So this is the overview of the tutorial. Oh, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the materials needed. I see that got flipped around somehow. Uh, then we're going to look at the driver installation. You need to install a driver for it. We're going to install the board information and libraries you need for um, the Node MCU in your Arduino IDE. We're going to look at how the, the shape of the Node MCU and what the problem with that is. We're going to look at a quick look out at the pinouts and see what the issues are there. Um, we're going to look at the specs of the board. Um, and then basically we're going to upload a sketch to your board. A board that's going to make the onboard LED flash. So let's jump into it. The things you're going to need is a Node MCU version 2 or higher. Uh, the older versions have some issues with um, um, with uh, the the firmware on it, you can upload different firmware. But it's better just to get a newer version of it. We're going to need a cheap breadboard, and we're going to need a micro USB type B cable that is capable of uh, transferring data. So not a cheap charge cable that's really thin. You need a cable that can communicate. And most likely you got one with your phone, so you have one laying around. The driver installation. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to install the driver. You can download that from my blog and the link is in the description below. It's a third party driver, there's practically no support for it, so it can be hard. And then what the thing, what the mo what most of the problems are is that people don't have the administrative privileges to install it. You're going to need that. Um, if you're not quite sure, Google it or talk to your sysadmin to help you with that. Um, after you make sure that you have uh, the uh, sysadmin privileges and you have downloaded driver, you first connect your node MCU to your computer with the USB cable. It's really important step. Don't miss that step. Then um, you right click on the installation file and say run as, as administrator and install the package. It will expand the package first. So it first will hustle around and install, uh, put some files on your computer. After that, this screen will pop up. Uh, all you need to do is click the install button and what it will do it will install the driver and a message will pop up saying driver installed successfully or it will come back uh, installation of the driver failed. If it failed you missed one of those steps like uh, either you didn't have administrative privileges or you forgot to connect your node MCU to your computer um, those are the two major things that are the problems. Or your USB cable is not data compatible, so even though you connect it, it can't communicate with your Node MCU. Uh, if none of these are the issues, you are in an undiscovered world. And uh, sadly, I can't help you with that because I've not run into it yet. I've seen some posts on Facebook about it, but um, there's not a lot. Uh, about it out there. 
preparing your Arduino IDE. If you have never run an ESP8266 off your Arduino IDE, you're going to need to install the drivers and the libraries needed to run these boards on your Arduino IDE. And the people at SparkFun have written like a really cool little tutorial about that. And um, the best thing to do is go back to my blog. There is that link, this link here. And you can just click on it, go to the tutorial, follow it, it's straightforward. I don't see a point in writing a tutorial if somebody already did a real great job about that. Oh. Let's look at the Node MCU itself. If you look at it, it's a fairly large board and it won't fit on your breadboard with well, it will fit on your breadboard, but you won't have any room to connect anything to it. So what most people do is they just get the female to male cables or female to female cables and just use the pins that are already connected to your Node MCU. But what I did is I bought a cheap uh, breadboard and I used a Dremel tool and just cut it along the spine, put my Node MCU on it so that I have enough room, found a piece of wood and just glued the breadboard onto the piece of wood and that's what you see here and that's the easiest way to do it so now you can connect as much as you want to it and even like bridge to other uh, breadboards but at least you got room to put the pins in now speaking about these pins um, when you look at the node MCU the labels on there for the data pins, they have like D0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, they are wrong. Well, they're not wrong, but they are, don't correspond to um, the, uh, uh, the, the Arduino digital pins. So if you look at this image, which you can download from my, uh, um, from my blog, if you look at that, you can actually see that D1 is a GPIO 05 or GPIO 5. Um, so what GPIO stands for is general purpose I.O. pins, um, which translate it's a digital pin for the Arduino users. Uh, you can see that without this image, you are quite lost because you will connect things to these pins thinking that it will work but it does not another thing is all these pins all these digital pins are basically three fold logic and they only can run 12 milliamps which is practically nothing so um, be aware when you uh, purchase breakout boards and sensors that they're threefold and that if they need power from your board that they don't draw more than 12 milliamps. If so, you need to power them through an external power supply. Now, you can power the Node MCU through the USB cable or you can use an external power supply up to 12 volts. I know they say uh, that you can put a 20 fold on there, but I would not. I did and the uh, power converter chip on board got so hot, I bet that will burn out in no time. So 12 fold maximum, minimally 300, I mean 500 milliamps, which is actually way too much because it doesn't draw that much. Um, and you connect that to uh, the over here it says V in. This is an, uh, a, an image from an older, um, uh, from from the previous versions of the M, uh, Node MCU. But uh, it in if you look at your board, it will say V in, and that's where you connect your external power supply to up to 12 volts. Now it has also an online, I mean onboard LED. And the onboard LED is connected to GPIO 2, not to pin 13. Um, why I'm saying that is we're going to upload the blink sketch. 
that's the easiest sketch to upload. So this is a basically a standard blink sketch, but if you notice, is it's not pin 13, it's pin 2. Before you can upload it, go to the tools menu, under boards, choose node MCU 1.0. The CPU frequency is 80 megahertz. The flash size is 4. Uh, the upload speed is 1150200. And the COM port, of course, is whatever your board is on. Mine is on COM9. When you install the driver, it will assign a COM port to it. And that's the COM port that you need to choose. So then what you do is you upload the sketch and it will go, you don't need to push any buttons. You just say upload on your Arduino IDE. It will upload and your LED will start flashing. And there you go. You've uploaded your first sketch straightforward and sort of that's the end of the tutorial. So this is the end of the tutorial. Now you can connect your Node MCU and load a uh, sketch up to it. So that's what you need to get started. In about 14 days I will uh, make a tutorial with the Node MCU and a temperature humidity sensor, the DHT11 or the 22, that's the one that I mostly use, and connect it to the cloud so you can store your data into the cloud. Um, but in the meanwhile, if you enjoyed this video and like to see more of it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, check the bell and leave a comment below and like the video if you want to. If you rather follow me on Facebook so you keep up to date of what is happening, you can click on the link in the description below or you can go to my blog the link is in the description below and subscribe to my monthly newsletter. So for now, have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.